Session two just coming up to quarter to 10 here in the morning. Got our try chart set up again. Some interesting price movements going on. The Euro Aussie dollar been steadily coming down all night. This would have been a really nice trade to be in around here. Since the open of the London session though at nine o'clock, price has really dropped a big one here. It's just consolidating now at the moment. Could be gearing up for another drop. There's certainly no signal for us there. New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc. This would have seemed like a good trade, but actually if we got in here, there's a chance it could trigger the stop loss. And the pound yen, again, last 30, 45 minutes, really caught on fire and the pound going up heavily, reached big highs up there before pulling back a little bit. Sadly, still no trade available, and it does look like for all three of them, it could be a while again before we actually get a trade. Hopefully this time, if it does take a while, it's actually worth it by the time we get there. Okay, here's our economic calendar for the day. Quite a lot, again, so we're not going to touch on everything. Australia GDP, that's a big one. That came out at 4.30 for them, quarterly and yearly. Both beat expectations quarterly, just by a little bit, 0.7% against 0.5% forecast. The yearly coming in 96 against a flat expectation of 0.0, .0 though, so really good win for them there. German retail sales month on month down minus 5.1%. They only forecast a minus 1.3. So that is quite a bit worse than expected. They'll be looking to see that reverse on the run up to Christmas as that begins. And then at nine o'clock, we did have on the Great British Pound, the house price index from Nationwide coming out month on month and year on year. House prices up 2.1% on the monthly, 11% on the yearly. Did wages go up by 11% in the last year? I don't remember that. Holy moly, that is absolute fire in the housing market. This is all residential as well. So between quarter past 10 and 11 o'clock coming up, we've got a lot of these European market manufacturing purchasing managers index numbers coming out. In fact, there's GBP at 11.30 as well. It's a real drip feed. Every 15 minutes, half an hour or so, we're getting a new number. It's the Italian unemployment rate dropped in there at 11 o'clock as well. Have a look for that one on the euro. Not really expecting these to have any impact on the trajectory of price. Total Eurozone unemployment rate, 12 o'clock. Forecast at 7.6 compared to a previous of 7.7. .7. Let's see if they can't bring that down. And then 3 o'clock just after from the Bundesbank, we got President Feid for making a speech. And at the same time, talking over the president will be executive board member Vermeling. A lot of Euro action to come throughout the day. 3 o'clock as well, not going to affect us, but the Brazilian GDP big one for them. And then when we get to the North American end of the day, even though we're not trading the US dollar, something that might have a knock on effect is the ADP non-farm employment change, the automatic data processing figures. They basically forerun the non-farm payroll numbers that come from the government. They come out this Friday. You'll see volatility on the US dollar anyway. If there's a big beat or a big miss, could have that knock on effect onto our currencies. Their market manufacturing PMI numbers also coming out 4.45, that's 15 minutes after Canada's. The ISM manufacturing PMI at 5 o'clock for them, that's seen as a little bit more credible than the market PMI. So that might also see some movement if there isn't already a trend set in motion. Busy day, let's head back onto the try chart. Don't really know where our next signals are going to come from. All of these are in a current trending motion already. So the Euro Aussie dollar, price well below the average and the awesome oscillator well below zero. And then just the reverse for these other two, the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc and the Great British pound yen, both of them with price comfortably above their moving averages, and also the awesome oscillator in full swing as well. So at the moment, pretty uncertain about where this trade is gonna come from. We'll just have to wait and see. Almost five to 11 here, no closer to a signal on any of these charts. In fact, further away, you see over here on the left, that Euro Aussie dollar, has been coming down even more so it's just extending the move it's already in likewise the pound has been very strong against the yen here look at that last few candles really been on a run up here and that's just accelerating now it's going to take a while before a move comes on one of these that's for sure here's all those pmi numbers that come out of europe then most of them are missing just by a little bit no major surprises Sweden, Spain, Switzerland, Italy and Germany and the Eurozone as a whole all slightly under. Only 61.4 against 61.5 for the Eurozone as a whole. Norway were exactly as forecast. And France, the United Kingdom beat theirs by just a touch. Meanwhile, 11 o'clock Italian unemployment came in at 9.3 against 10.1 forecast. 
they'll be happy with that. They'll want to see that 9.3 get even lower. But none of this having any real impact on the currencies. The volume has just remained high throughout this morning session. But we do start to see price bounce back from some of these highs. So it's getting up a bit now on the euro. It's getting down a bit on the New Zealand dollar and down a bit on the pound. These can't go forever. So it's just going to take us quite a bit to get there. Not a lot going on in these charts. The momentum does continue to come away from the previous trend. So at the moment on the current trajectory, the next zero line crossover would either be on the euro Aussie dollar here going above zero or on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc going below zero. Whether those would actually give us an entry signal at the moment, it seems unlikely as price will still be on the other side of the moving average. But perhaps they flip back again to give us that entry signal. That eurozone unemployment rate at 12 o'clock did come in just as forecast at 7.6%. Slight improvement on the previous 7.8%. So current eurozone employment headed in the right direction, although still higher than they would like it, I'm sure. Just past quarter past one here, and we can see on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc pairing, if we zoom in that awesome oscillator, it did just close below zero. Not a signal for us as price is still above the EMA. However, we can be ready now that if price reverses again and carries on its overall uptrend, we can get in on that zero line crossover. It's a big if whether or not that happens again soon. However, it is a little bit of a step closer for us. 10 past two now, still not a lot of price movement over the last hour or so. I'm waiting for that opportunity still as we get deeper into the afternoon. Just under 15 minutes now until we get those US dollar ADP non-farm employment numbers. Could prove to bring a little bit more volume in the market and hopefully get some movement going. Last few histogram bars down here on that New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. We have seen them go green. We want to see price bounce up more and more get across zero and get us in on an entry signal. And here we do see an immediate increase in volatility on these charts. Price movement quite a bit quicker as these ADP numbers now do come out at quarter past three. And the numbers are a bit of a miss there. They were forecast at 406,000 jobs to be added. But it was only 374,000. So not ideal for the dollar there. Aside from the volume increase we see on these pairs, not sure the impact knock-on we'll see but we can see just four minutes in to this period so another 11 minutes to go and the volume is already getting right up there as one of the highest of the session and as those candles just closed we can fully see the increase in volume that comes with those adp numbers and the one we'd hoped would be our old reliable has started coming down in price again it's turning those histogram bars red and it's making that zero line crossover appear much further away Let's hope this little bit of green that's showing here is going to continue its way. Meanwhile, on the Euro Australian dollar chart, let's zoom in on this one. And what we can see is that in the last period, it did close above the awesome oscillator. Price still well below the EMA. If that awesome oscillator crosses below zero, now we get a few red candles, we will have ourselves a sell trade there. And finally, on the pound yen, if we zoom in on this one as well, we can see that it is threatening currently. The awesome oscillator to finish below zero which again gets us closer to that recrossover if we see price move upward we could well finish with a buy trade here in a couple periods didn't look like these charts for offering much but now we've got three potential entry signals coming up in the next hour or so and that awesome oscillator it does close below zero on the pound yen here over on the right hand side so now if it can get back above zero we're in New Zealand dollar Swiss franc comes straight back into its range here and that's all it's done for a good few hours now. It hasn't moved much outside of this price range. Even with the increased volatility and volume in this area, it still wants to stay within those bounds for a minute. Your Aussie dollar, if we can get a break through this sort of mini support level here and crack on down, we should get it to recross zero. It is all a waiting game though and we are waiting. Let's just recap a few of these numbers that have been coming in. Market manufacturing PMI for Canada, they beat their expectations a little bit. The US missed theirs by a, just a touch, 61.1 against 61.2. So no real impact there. Five o'clock then we got these ISM manufacturing numbers, the PMI and the employment, both of them missing by a bit again in the red. And we see that increase in volume come at five o'clock when those numbers are released difficult to try and estimate what the impact is going to be off these type of things. If you just think there is going to be 
increased volatility and so you want to get out of the way. These are the type of things you can watch out for. Let's take a look at that Euro Australian dollar chart over here though. And as we zoom in, this histogram bar right here does look as though it's going to close below zero for the first bar to do so. Price below the EMA, which means we could well finally be getting entry signal at half past five. With one minute to go before the close, it does look like a certainty. Let's zoom in on that Euro Aussie dollar and let's pull up our ATR. Currently showing 11.7 pips, so that will be our reading. Two times that, 23.4 pips to the stop loss. Our risk will be based off that. We got just over $8,000 in the account and we'll have our two sub trades at half a percent risk each. We do see the close happen. We can see the reading on that one was positive. It's just closed there. So our risk is on screen now. Let's get into these trades. There's our two trades. Again, we try and be quick, but we do get filled at slightly different prices for these. We'll just treat this one as sub trade A. So we're going 234 there for two times ATR and 117 times there for one times. Set our trading stop loss here as a custom 23.4 pips, 234 points. But we'll also set this stop loss as well because it won't set it as we've said until after we get that far into profit. So we'll manually trade it a little bit as we go. And that's us in our trade. Now we just hope that this can at least proc. It's going to have to break through this support level. If it does go, then there's a good chance that the trade and stop loss will move pretty far with it. It's moving in our favor slightly now. About 35 minutes into this trade and it really does look like it's going to go against us. We got in around about the bottom in the end it's going to look like, but we will have to wait and see if this price keeps surging. There is always a chance for a reversal. Quarter past six, as price still lingers around our stop loss, let's have a look at our other charts, see what's going on. Both of them nearing a signal to give us a buy trade. Price coming back down on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc though, and that histogram bar turns red. We are seeing a succession of green histogram bars on the pound yen. So if that continues, we could get a buy entry there. Let's get back on the Euro Aussie dollar though, as price does come back in our favor a little bit. Good stuff. Just turned seven o'clock. We're still in a loss on our trade at the moment. It's ranging right between our entry price and our stop losses. Not done much at all in the last 45 minutes or so. And same with these other two charts. We might be getting buy signals soon, but price is really not doing anything definitive. They're both showing very whipsaw like action. So even if we do get in a trade, I'm not super confident about the direction it's going to go for us. Price coming kindly for us the last few periods turned red again on the histogram and we we're actually in profit for just a little bit there. We're floating above and below it. It's nice to see though after it got so close to our stop loss. And incredibly edging pretty close to our take profit now. And there it does trigger for us our take profit. So what we can do with this one is manually trail that stop loss. Let's shift it to one times ATR value. That means that we shouldn't really lose money on the trade as we've already captured one times ATR worth of profits. If we do get two times ATR into profit, then that's when that trailing stop loss will take over automatically. And from then on, every pip will trail that stop loss. Call it at eight now. And on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc chart, we are actually getting a buy signal to enter. That's the first histogram bar there that's closed positively. But because of the time of day we're at now, we've been on the charts for about 10 hours now already. So we are going to, in fact, decline this trade. And that'll be the same if any buy signal comes on the Great British Pound Yen chart. We're just going to stick it out with our Euro Australian dollar trade and see how that finishes up. Not a lot going on with our trade the last 45 minutes or so. Price really just ranging. A lot of volume has left the market compared to late afternoon, early evening. If we had entered that New Zealand dollar Swiss franc trade so far, it would be doing absolutely nothing. Would have been sat right at our entry price the entire time. Quarter past nine and price coming a little bit better for us, but still not reaching new lows. So we can get a bit of a push out of it before the end of the day. Price just ranging the last few periods has come up towards our entry price again. Still in profit a little bit at the moment though. It is just coming up to 11 o'clock now, which does mean our session will be over. We have a choice between either manually closing it down or letting our trailing stop loss run through the night and see how it goes. And so I think we will go for the latter. 
it does mean if the awesome oscillator crosses over zero, meaning that we would have to manually close the trade at that sign, we won't be able to take that signal because we won't be on the platform. But I'd like to see how this trade fares with the trailing stop loss. So we will pick this one back up in the morning for session three. Let's check out today's half trade in the journal. There it is, the outcome of this trade is still to be decided. We're down quite a lot of money at the moment. After the first day, having these two losses was not a good start. We left our trading stop loss around about our entry price. Hopefully that can put in a shift overnight to get some serious profits back. Because at the moment we are looking like we need a couple really trending days tomorrow to be able to get the win here. Still though, at least we haven't lost any more money today. It just took a long time to get into this trade, 5.30, and then the first half closed at 7.30. This other one now, it's just gone 11 o'clock, so five and a half, six hours on, still going. Be interesting to see where that ends up. We'll be back in session three.